He was one of the greatest players in the history of baseball, and he was a darn nice guy. You might be able to put a price on his baseball card, like for real, <laughs> but here are five priceless things about Hannes Wagner. Number one, he was an unconventional athlete. Johannes Peter Wagner, better known as Hannes, was born in a small town in southwestern Pennsylvania in 1874. His parents were German immigrants. His father worked in a coal mine. Hannes worked in the mine too, but he and his brothers also played baseball. His older brother, Albert, called Butts, was the first to play professional baseball, even reaching the major leagues briefly, playing for the Washington Senators and the Brooklyn Bridegrooms, eventually renamed the Dodgers, during the 1898 season. It was Butts Wagner who got Hannes his first tryout for a pro team in 1895. In 1897, Hannes Wagner was signed by the Louisville Colonels of the National League. Two years later, the owner of the Colonels bought into another National League team, the Pirates, and took Wagner and several other of Louisville's best players to Pittsburgh. He didn't look like a world-class athlete. He stood 5 feet 11 inches and lost a few inches of height due to being severely bow-legged. Those who saw him play said when he ran, his limbs looked like spinning propellers. He was likened to an octopus for his long arms and an elephant for his hulking, lumbering frame. But a world-class athlete he was. Hannes Wagner played 18 seasons for the Pirates and distinguished himself on and off the field. Number two, he was a good role model. Wagner was a standout not just for his ability, but for his character. The great baseball historian and statistician Bill James writes that Hannes Wagner was a man who had no enemies and who never forgot his friends. In an era when veterans often took cruel delight in tormenting rookies, Wagner was known to be kind and supportive to young players. He was so fair-minded he even spoke kindly of umpires, saying that he had never known one to deliberately make an unfair decision. When Wagner learned that a tobacco company had issued a baseball card bearing his picture without his permission, he threatened legal action if production of the card was not immediately canceled. Wagner didn't want his young fans to have to buy cigarettes in order to get his baseball card. Today, it's the most valuable baseball card in the world. Fewer than 60 copies are known to exist, and last year, one sold for over $3 million. In 1910, the tobacco company tried to obtain Wagner's permission to issue a baseball card with his image. They reached out to John Gruber, who was a sports writer and also the official scorekeeper for the Pirates at the time. They offered Gruber $10 if he could convince Wagner to allow production of his baseball card. Gruber wrote to Wagner and informed him of the proposed arrangement. Wagner wrote back, quote, Dear John, I don't want my picture in cigarettes, but I don't want you to lose $10. So I'm enclosing a check for that sum. Number three, he was one of the all-time great ambassadors for baseball. Wagner retired as a player after the 1917 season. The owner of the Pirates offered to keep Wagner on the team payroll at his final salary of $10,000 a year, but Wagner declined the offer saying that if he couldn't earn his keep, he didn't want to be paid. Wagner spent the first decade of his retirement barnstorming with his own semi-pro ball club, coaching baseball and basketball at what is today Carnegie Mellon University, and running a sporting goods store bearing his name in downtown Pittsburgh. Eventually, he returned to the Pirates as a coach, a job he kept for 19 years. Among his pupils were future Hall of Famers Pi Trainer. Arky Vaughn and Ralph Kiner. At the 1944 All-Star Game held at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Wagner was named an honorary coach for the National League team, the first time anyone had been given that honor. He remained in Pittsburgh for the rest of his life, where he was regarded as a local hero until his death in 1955. And I guess it goes without saying that, number four, he was an inaugural member of the Hall of Fame. Wagner was one of the first five players elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1936, alongside Babe Ruth, 
Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, and Christy Mathewson. Wagner received the second highest vote total, tied with Ruth, behind only Cobb. An awesome accomplishment and so well deserved, but it still sticks in my craw a little that Wagner didn't get more votes than Cobb. Because the thing is, Wagner was better than Cobb. In fact, number five, he was the best ball player of his era. And if it wasn't for a certain fellow by the name of George Herman Babe Ruth, I'd vote for Wagner as the greatest player of any era. Screw you, Ty Cobb. Hannes Wagner won eight National League batting titles, still tied for the most ever, and hit 300 or better for 15 straight seasons. He was the second player ever to get 3,000 hits. He led the National League in runs batted in four times, in on-base percentage four times, in stolen bases five times, in slugging percentage six times, in extra base hits seven times, and finished in the top 10 for home runs 11 times. And those are just his offensive numbers. He was just as impressive in the field. He spent most of his career as a shortstop and was arguably the best player ever at that position. He led the league in putouts as a shortstop twice, double plays turned as a shortstop four times, and fielding percentage as a shortstop four times. Babe Ruth called him irreplaceable. Legendary New York Giants manager John McGraw said the only way to get a ball past him was to hit it eight feet over his head. McGraw also called Wagner, quote, the closest thing to a perfect player. Hannes Wagner was the epitome of what a sports hero should be. Brilliant on the field, kind and decent off the field. He once said, there ain't much to be in a ball player if you're a ball player. And he sure was one hell of a ball player. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you found this one worth watching. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron of this channel. Thanks for watching.